Geosynthetic clay liners have greatly benefited waste disposal and liquid containment infrastructure over the past 40 years, in large part due to the enormous amount of standardized data available to designers on these products and their various components. Uniform manufacturing quality and standardized testing protocols provide designers with predictable geosynthetic performance for optimal site-specific service lives, predictable material costs, and in most cases, quicker construction timelines. Knowing which technical considerations are most important for the use of a geosynthetic clay liner in a containment system requires experience. In this video, we will look at the use of geosynthetic clay liners in modern containment design and key issues related to how their bentonite core hydrates and enables them to serve as high-performing hydraulic barriers. Decades of research show how geosynthetic clay liners provide exceptional containment on their own. But in many applications now, containment designers use additional components. These composite system approaches may include a geomembrane laminated to the geosynthetic clay liner, or the use of a geomembrane as a layer above the geosynthetic clay liner, which subsequently serves as a high-performance seepage control layer. The composite system approach is extremely effective, as notably demonstrated by Bonaparte and Giroux's work. Any engineered barrier may leak, whether constructed with natural materials or geosynthetics. Therefore, leakage rates must be considered in the design. The best available design and construction practices seek to minimize the possibility of leakage, which is another reason composite systems have grown in use. For geosynthetic clay liners, we look at their vital role in seepage control, how they become hydrated when installed, and their hydraulic conductivity. These details provide inputs for a wide range of containment designs, such as landfill disposal cells, residuals management, and liquid impoundments. Designing effective containment barriers with geosynthetic clay liners requires an understanding of bentonite properties and behavior. In particular, how bentonite hydrates, the relationship of its hydration to the hydraulic conductivity of the geosynthetic clay liner, and how the type and quality of the bentonite dictate the level of hydraulic barrier performance. When a geosynthetic clay liner roll is installed, it begins to absorb moisture from the subgrade soil because sodium bentonite has a very strong affinity for water. As it hydrates, the bentonite rapidly swells and transitions to a gel-like state. The gelled bentonite, encapsulated between geotextiles, forms a seamless monolithic membrane barrier to hydraulic flow. A fully hydrated geosynthetic clay liner may exhibit a hydraulic conductivity that is approximately two to three orders of magnitude lower than a traditional compacted clay liner. When compared to compacted clay, an appreciably thinner geosynthetic clay liner, which is manufactured in a controlled environment and is characterized by uniformity, provides equal and arguably superior hydraulic barrier performance. In general, moisture uptake from the subgrade is how the bentonite swells. Within a few weeks of deployment, sufficient hydration typically occurs. The bentonite forms a competent hydraulic barrier provided the subgrade material and preparation follow accepted industry standards. Upon installation, the geosynthetic clay liner immediately begins to absorb moisture from the subgrade soil. The uptake hydration process is particularly effective when the soil is close to or exceeds its optimum moisture content. If needed or required for the intended function, a designer could consider soil moisture conditioning during subgrade preparation in order to accelerate the rate of hydration for a geosynthetic clay liner. For instance, even a poorly graded sand subgrade compacted wet of the optimum moisture content can result in a geosynthetic clay liner attaining a moisture content of 70% in under 30 days. It should be recognized that this timing is generally faster than the time required to place waste within a disposal cell or to fill a liquid impoundment. In addition to understanding the importance of an appropriate and properly prepared subgrade, one must also consider what overlies the geosynthetic clay liner in order to achieve effective hydraulic barrier performance. 
protection, and confinement of the geosynthetic clay liner are crucial considerations. During liner system construction, a sufficient protective cover soil must be placed above the geosynthetic clay liner as soon as possible. The general industry guidance is to place the cover soil on the same day of geosynthetic clay liner deployment. The sooner a confining cover layer is added, the sooner the natural hydration process begins. The geosynthetic clay liner should not be left exposed. Importantly, there should be intimate contact with the soil beneath. If the design uses a composite system, the geosynthetic clay liner should also be in intimate contact with the geomembrane above. Whether it's a small basin installation or a large seepage control installation for a valley fill, confinement needs to be applied quickly to optimize barrier performance. Confinement provides important protection for the geosynthetic clay liner and the overall lining system. Confinement helps ensure the required intimate contact between the liner system layers. With the geosynthetic clay liner in intimate contact with the prepared subgrade, the bentonite's osmotic swell will produce a lower hydraulic conductivity. This is directly related to the effective stress on the geosynthetic clay liner. Even when permeated with an aggressive solution, void space will decrease as the effective stress increases. Thus, the geosynthetic clay liner hydraulic conductivity decreases, cyclic wetting and drying is prevented, and geosynthetic clay liner performance is optimized. Is moisture uptake after confinement the only way a geosynthetic clay liner hydrates? No. In some situations, liquid may flow to the geosynthetic clay liner from an overlying cover layer once the barrier system is put into service. The bentonite may have already hydrated from the subgrade, but if it has not fully hydrated, some of the contained liquid may seep into the geosynthetic clay liner through a cover soil or through a leaking barrier element in a composite system, such as from a small hole on a geomembrane seam. This leakage may complete the hydration of the bentonite. In a composite system, this is the main role of the geosynthetic clay liner, to cut off seepage flow in the event an overlying barrier develops a leak. As noted earlier, assistive prehydration methods may also be considered. Finally, if available moisture is not sufficient to hydrate the bentonite properly, assistive prehydration methods may be used to accelerate the process, but one should always consult the geosynthetic manufacturer first. Essentially, to achieve the highest performance in an engineered barrier system, use a geosynthetic clay liner. This chart summarizes research conducted by three of the field's most influential figures for barrier system understanding. It looks at leakage of constructed liner systems, including a geomembrane-only design, a composite geomembrane compacted clay liner system, and a geomembrane geosynthetic clay liner composite design from initial filling to post-cover installation. The research demonstrates an engineered barrier system comprised of a geomembrane geosynthetic clay liner composite has the lowest leakage rate throughout. Understanding what influences geosynthetic clay liner hydration is essential to proper design, but it is equally important to recognize what should not occur on site or in the proper evaluation of materials in the laboratory. Here we recreate an experiment, referred to as a quick water test, which found its way into the industry around 2012. It must be noted that neither this test nor the testing apparatus reflect any standardized test method for geosynthetic clay liners from any recognized industry testing organization, such as ASTM, ISO, or GRI. The quick water test was designed to demonstrate the immediate sealing performance of a geosynthetic clay liner with a powder bentonite core versus one with a granular bentonite core. The test, however, is not representative of any real-world circumstance. Essentially, the apparatus is a modified falling head permeameter. The quick water test uses spring-loaded seals to lock the samples into side-by-side -side chambers for comparative analysis. A reservoir below each specimen collects any leakage. 
The samples were cut directly from the geosynthetic clay liners in their as-received condition, which, by industry standard, should not exhibit a moisture content of greater than 35%. As in the original quick water test, we have used a granular bentonite geosynthetic clay liner sample, seen here on the left, and a powdered bentonite type, seen here on the right. When the test begins, it does so with the application of the liquid directly applied to the geosynthetic clay liner samples. Note how many basic boundary conditions from the field are not being used. One, we are not placing the geosynthetic clay liner over a representative soil. Two, there has been no hydration of the bentonite before the test. And three, a free head of liquid has been rapidly placed directly upon the geosynthetic clay liner. Further, and contrary to common composite lining systems, there is no geomembrane above. Still, no leakage is observed, save for some that seems to have slipped around the side of the powdered bentonite sample. These specimens have done exactly what bentonite of appropriate quality is expected to do in a geosynthetic clay liner. Hydrate efficiently, swell, and form an effective hydraulic barrier no matter if the bentonite is in granular or powdered form. Regardless, this test fails to be representative of real-world field responses of geosynthetic clay liners. The quick water test should never be used for product evaluation or selection. It does not provide design-useful information. At best, it obscures what designers need to know about hydraulic conductivity of a geosynthetic clay liner and its reliance on bentonite and in-place conditions. So how should we verify the hydraulic conductivity? We can refer to standard guides and test methods that use a flexible wall permeameter. This apparatus allows the user to control the hydration process, the confining stress, and the head pressure placed on the geosynthetic clay liner. The hydraulic conductivity of a sample is measured under more representative boundary conditions that can more closely model the project conditions. The quick water test does not. Some of the resources we can look to include the Geosynthetic Institute's Standard Guide for Designing with Geosynthetic Clay Liners in Various Applications, GRI GCL5, or the generic GRI GCL3, Standard Specification for Test Methods, Required Properties, and Testing Frequencies of Geosynthetic Clay Liners. Basic hydraulic conductivity with deionized water can be evaluated with ASTM D5887, Standard Test Method for Measurement of Index Flux through Saturated Geosynthetic Clay Liner Specimens using a Flexible Wall Permeameter, or with EN16416, Geosynthetic Clay Barriers, Determination of Water Flux Index, Flexible Wall Permeameter Method at Constant Head. Also, geosynthetic clay liner hydraulic performance with a potentially incompatible liquid, such as a project-specific leachate, can be evaluated using ASTM D6766, Standard Test Method for Evaluation of Hydraulic Properties of Geosynthetic Clay Liners, permeated with potentially incompatible aqueous solutions. To demonstrate the osmotic suction phenomena, a well-graded granular bentonite geosynthetic clay liner was placed adjacent to a powdered bentonite geosynthetic clay liner. The products were placed over a prepared subgrade with the same moisture content. Within the first week, we observed both bentonite gradations take up moisture from the subgrade and swell rapidly. So whether a bentonite is granular or powder is not a differentiator in hydraulic barrier performance. What is important is that when you select a geosynthetic clay liner, it must be a quality product. How can you determine that? The manufacturer should verify products with accepted standards. Additionally, product quality can be supported by widely used specifications, such as the previously mentioned GRI GCL3. That specification requires the manufacturer to verify the durability of all product components, geotextile, geomembrane, if one is laminated to the product, and the bentonite. These globally accepted peer-reviewed test methods and guidance documents assist the designer and ensure the purchaser and project owner that they've received a first-rate quality product, one that will provide the expected performance.
In example, let's look more closely at the use of two of these quality confirming resources, the GRI GCL3 specification and ASTM D6766. Here we see results from long-term durability testing with the ASTM standard to evaluate bentonite performance compliance with the GRI specification. In the test conducted here, a 150 mm diameter specimen was hydrated with deionized water. The green diamond data points drop off abruptly. This demonstrates the bentonite's ability to swell and cut off flow. Once the bentonite hydrated in the test, a 0.1 molar solution of calcium chloride was introduced to evaluate the bentonite durability. As can be seen, the bentonite performed within the required parameters of the GRI GCL3 specification. One should note that this test is to be conducted on a bentonite that does not contain polymer. Polymers can be added to enhance certain characteristics of a product, but for this test, we want to know the true hydraulic performance of the base bentonite. Whether the bentonite is in granular or powdered form, the quality of the bentonite should be known through accepted standard testing. In this video, we've covered some fundamentals for evaluating the hydraulic barrier performance of geosynthetic clay liners and the importance of proper design, selection, and installation to their performance. We've seen the exceptionally low hydraulic conductivity produced by composite barrier systems and emphasized the importance of confinement and subgrade moisture content. We've also debunked the granular versus powdered bentonite argument as it relates to the quick water test and that tests lack of applicability to real-world project scenarios. We've also introduced the idea of polymers being added to bentonite mixes after proper bentonite quality testing. It's a topic that merits more discussion, as geosynthetic clay liners are increasingly used with more extreme leachates. These applications have grown precisely because geosynthetic clay liners can be adapted to suit site-specific containment challenges especially with polymer bentonite composites.